part two of solving quadratic inequalities is solving quadratic inequalities algebraically. So not all the time are we going to graph and then determine the zeros and in which would give us the intervals for the solution. We like to know an algebraic way of solving these. So here are a series of steps that you would see in the notes. The first step is to rewrite the inequality so that the quadratic is on one side and zero is on the other. Step two is determine where the inequality is zero using any method appropriate. So you have three methods. The first method you found in the last module was factoring. The second one was completing the square and then using the quadratic formula. Factoring is your usually your first option. Step three, use the x values obtained in the previous step to label on the number line. So once you find the zeros, right, so that's basically what you're finding in step two are the zeros. You're gonna place them on a number line, and then you in step four, you take test values on each side of the zeros. And if the inequality is less than zero or less than or equal to zero, then the inequality is true wherever the test values are negative. And this is because values less than zero are negative numbers. So if the inequality is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero, then the inequality is true where the test values are positive because values greater than zero are positive numbers. Okay, so let's try the first example. The first example says solve negative x squared plus eight greater than two x algebraically. So following step one, we need to get zero on one side. It really doesn't matter which side, but we are so used to seeing the zero on the right side, so we'll go ahead and be consistent and get zero on the right side, meaning that we will go ahead and move 2x over to the left side. So originally we have negative x squared plus eight greater than 2x. I'll subtract 2x from each side. So that I'll get negative x squared minus 2x plus 8 greater than 0. And since I don't like my leading coefficient to be negative, I'm going to multiply through at this step each side by a negative 1. Now you have to be careful here because when I do this, I'm going to get my leading coefficient to be positive, which I want. But Remember that if you multiply or divide by a negative with an inequality, we have to reverse the inequality sign. So then we get positive x squared plus 2x minus 8 on the left, less than 0 times negative 1, which stays 0. So following step 2, in which finding the zeros to the quadratic, we can set x squared plus 2x minus 8 equal to 0. And we can factor this using plus 4 minus 2. Using the zero product property, we get x plus 4 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0. x equals negative 4 and x equals 2. So those are our zeros. Step three says to graph these values on a number line. So graph negative four and two. I usually draw little barriers. Okay. In step number four, it says to take test values on each side of our zero. So we'll pick um, easy numbers, of course. I'm going to go ahead and pick negative 5, 0, and 3 as our test values. So I'm going to go ahead and take the inequality. I'm going to take it in factored form, x plus 4, x minus 2. And I'll go ahead and plug in when x is negative 5. So we get negative 5 
plus 4 and negative 5 minus 2. So this will be negative 1 times negative 7, which is positive 7, which is a greater than 0, and we get positive values to the left of negative 4. The next test value we'll use 0, which is usually the easiest. So I'm going to have 0 plus 4 times 0 minus 2. And we get 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, which is a number less than 0. So numbers in between negative 4 and 2 are less than 0, which are negative. The last test value we're going to take is x equal to 3. So we're going to get 3 plus 4 times 3 minus 2. And we'll get 7 times 1, which is 7, which is a number greater than 0, which means that numbers to the right of 2 are positive. Okay, so then we go back to our original problem in step 1. And notice that we were looking for numbers after we move 2x over, multiply 3 by a negative, our inequality sign switched, and we are now looking for numbers less than 0. And looking at our box, if the inequality is less than 0, then the inequality is true where the test values are negative. So we have less than 0, we're looking for negative in our inequality is true where um, the values are negative and meaning that numbers to the left of negative 4 and numbers to the right of 2 are not part of our solution. So step 5 says we can put our answer in interval notation. So we have negative 4 to 2 will give us negative numbers. We have a strict inequality, so we will be using parentheses. 